Welcome back to Asia News, everyone. This is Julia. FCRZ Timorese Ministerials to prepare plans as to comply with ASEAN criteria. The residence representative of the International Finance Corporation, David Friedman, advised the Timorese government, specifically the ministerials level, to lay out the plan and program before the current ASEAN members meet the guidelines as the requirement for Timorese to complete the accession process to ASEAN. Uh, there will be a great meeting of 10 ASEAN members on May this year and they will emit the guidelines for Timor-Leste's accession process with all the complete requirements in which must be fulfilled by Timor-Leste to become member. Respectedly, each ministries and government lead officials can lay out each of their plan as to fulfill their requirements. A while ago, Timorese economists urged the government to invest in all sectors of the country before Timor-Leste joining the ASEAN. On November 2022, at the 40th and the 41st ASEAN Summit in Cambodia, the current member states agreed and confirmed that they accepted Timor-Leste's candidacy as the 11th member of ASEAN with an observer status. The actual member states of ASEAN are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. Antonio Leite meet with Shanana and discuss educational issues. Portuguese Secretary of State for Education, Antonio Leite, met with Carola Shanana Guzman to discuss about the education issues of the country. Guzman said education issue is a huge matter that Timor Leste's face. A fine cooperation with Portugal in education area can be a good expectation for Timor Leste in the future. He's on his official visit and came to find out the education issue and he went on visiting Portuguese schools and met with some Timorese family who wanted to enroll their children in the schools. But there are no enough space. We also visited the cafe school in Manatutu, Baukau Aileu. Our great challenge is education, but great cooperation with Portugal, we can slowly move into the future with a strong hope. Shanano Guzman also explained there will be a chance to support Timorese young people with good Portuguese knowledge to study in Portugal, such as in law and so on. Singapore will work with Indonesia, ASEAN and UN to push for Myanmar's peace plan. Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said the city-state will work with Indonesia and other Southeast Asian countries as well as partners like the United Nations to push Myanmar's military rulers to implement a stalled peace plan. Uh, on Myanmar, we regret, we both regretted the lack of progress in ASEAN's five-point consensus. Singapore will continue working with Indonesia and with ASEAN members, plus ASEAN's partners like the UN to push for the full implementation of the five points of consensus. Lee added that the leaders regretted the lack of progress on the peace plan on Myanmar, which has been gripped by violence and unrest since a coup in February 2021 that appended the decade of democratic reforms. The meeting between the two countries also involved the signing of several memorandums of understanding, including the sharing of knowledge, but could support the development of Indonesia's new capital, Nusantara. Two police officers accused of deadly football stampede in Indonesia are released. An Indonesian court released two out of three police officers charged with negligence over one of the world's deadly stadium stampedes while one was sentenced to one and a half years. <laughs> The October 2022 match in Malang, East Java between Arema FC and Persebaya Surabaya ended in chaos with 135 spectators killed, many crushed as they fled for exits after police fired tear gas into the crowd. An investigation by Indonesian Human Rights Commission found the main cause of this stampede was police firing into the crowd 45 rounds of tear gas which Soccer's world governing body, FIFA, has banned as a crowd control measure. Last week, a soccer match official was also sentenced to one and a half years in prison after finding him guilty over the same offences. Family of deadly stampede victims not satisfied with Indonesian court decision. 
The families of the victims of one of the world's deadliest stadium stampedes lamented the decision of an Indonesian court after it jailed a policeman but cleared to other officials of negligence over crowd control measures during the fatal incident at a local soccer match. Family members who watched the verdict at the courthouse in Surabaya said they did not feel justice had been served. Today's verdict, which we lamented from the beginning of the court sessions, these past three months have failed to give us a sense of justice and basic rights to the victims, which was restitution for them, that wound is too deep, and it can only be healed with a sense of justice. One of the policemen, Hastar Mawan, was sentenced to one and a half years in prison. Two other officers, Bambang Sidik Ahmadi and Wahyu Setio Pranoto, were cleared of wrongdoing and freed by the judge. Their lawyer could not immediately be reached for comment. An investigation by Indonesia's Human Rights Commission found the main cause of the stampede was police firing into crowd 45 rounds of tear gas. The October 2022 derby in Malang, East Java between RMFC and Persebaya Surabaya ended in chaos, with 135 spectators killed. Many crashed as they fled for exits after police fired tear gas into the crowd. Cambodia welcomes return of stolen ancient artifacts from overseas. A ceremony to mark the return of hundreds of stolen ancient artifacts and jewelry pieces to Cambodia was held at the Peace Palace in the nation's capital. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen attended the ceremony in Phnom Penh to give blessings for the stolen artifacts that were returned primarily from the United States and United Kingdom. The Southeast Asian countries' archaeological sites, including Koh Kher, an ancient site of the Khmer Empire, suffered widespread looting in civil conflicts between the 1960s and 1990s. Cambodia's government has since sought to repatriate stolen antiquities sold on the international market. Germany to strengthen economic ties with Japan amid supply chain tension. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz will touch down in Japan with six of his ministers seeking closer economic ties as he considers reducing German dependence on Chinese raw materials amid global supply chain tensions. Scholz and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida are planning a government consultation involving multiple cabinet members from both countries to discuss ways to secure economic security. Japan is Germany's second largest trading partner in Asia behind China, with volumes reaching about 46 billion euros in 2022. China to make optimized arrangements for tourists entering. Chinese announced that it will be allowing all categories of visas to be issued from Wednesday, March 15, as it reopens its borders to foreign tourists for the first time in three years since the COVID-19 pandemic. The removal of this last cross-border control measure imposed to guard against COVID-19 comes after authorities last month declared victory over the virus. Tourism industry insiders do not expect a massive influx of visitors into the short run or significant boost to the economy. In 2018, international tourism receipt accounted for just 0.9% of China's gross domestic product. Japan and South Korea business leaders take steps towards better ties. The head of Japan's Kedandring business lobby, Masakazu Tokura, met with members of its South Korean counterpart, the Federation of Korean Industries, as well as South Korean President, Yoon suk yeol The two business lobbies agreed to launch foundations aimed at forward-looking bilateral relations in what Tokura called the first big step towards the restoration of Japan-South Korea relations. Yoon is in Japan for the first visit by South Korean President in 12 years. Yoon and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida promised to turn the page of years of animosity over their country's difficult shared story. Thank you very much everyone for today. Have a nice day.